Pentecost. So relatively new uh, celebration in the life of the church, hence uh, trying to piece together the readings in different sources. But this is the readings that the, uh, the US bishops suggested for today. So uh, we made it happen, thank God. And uh, I like them because they give us that opportunity again uh, to remember everything that we've been through <laughs> over the last 50 days and even longer, 40 days before that in Lent, uh, to see how it's meant to be shaping us and recognizing our, the importance of our relationships both with one another uh, as we gather for Eucharist and also with the communion of saints as we heard Mary at the center, really, of those early days. Um, and I was reading a book recently called The Eyewitnesses, <laughs> The Gospel Eyewitnesses. So how important her testimony, her continued teaching amongst the early church was to both their sticking together and recognizing Jesus as the center of their lives and also communicating uh, what became the readings that we just shared. So she was involved in that according to the Acts of the Apostles and our gospel reading has a significance of recognizing this new family of God that has somehow sprung forth, flowered forth from Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And again, there at the center, uh, both Mary and the beloved disciple. Uh, so her maternal uh, protection and care for us right there as part of the testimony recorded to us by St. Luke in Acts of the Apostles and St. John in his gospel, uh, all connected and rooted in those experiences of the power and the movement of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'd like to highlight as far as the gospel when it says that Jesus handed over his spirit. It wasn't just that he died and went to the Father, yes, <laughs> but he was really handing it over to Mary and the beloved disciple, the new family that we are a part of, and now invites us to see this as us remembering the significance of Mary in our history and also calling forth how we are in conversation and relationship with her now uh, so that we can continue to benefit from her wisdom, her guidance. She's praying, <laughs> I trust, as well as the beloved disciple for us who are also striving uh, to be images of the church in the world, the sacrament of salvation. We have that invitation by Jesus himself to be members of his body. <laughs> so there's some pretty clear evidence that uh, why we need it and need Mary in our life and the, the beloved disciple, this new family of faith that we belong to by nature of our baptism and Jesus' invitation to us and something that we can confirm now as we move forward into ordinary time. We uh, begin in the seventh week of ordinary time after the Easter celebrations, uh, but seeing how it's inviting us to grow deeper into that experience so that we can grow more confident, more trusting, and more transparent uh, to the transforming love of Jesus Christ. It's uh, working in our lives. Uh, so we can be and pay testimony to that by what we're doing today gathering for the sacraments, and uh, as we move forward, or sent really forward by God uh, to bring that experience of love into the world. We have Mary to guide us. I know she's praying for us. St. John, uh, the beloved disciple, also uh, are encouraging us uh, to see that we can turn to them and also our other ancestors in the faith uh, to help us to see more clearly what it means to make and allow Jesus to be the center of our lives uh, as we move into that direction and see our calling to make that come alive for others. <laughs> that's our task and challenge, uh, and that's the nourishment, ultimately, that I sense God desires for us is to see how we can bring that hope and new vision into the lives of everyone we encounter.